God that we are going to be someone who is ready to worship. You see, if you saw someone came down here as a woman and says, I'm God, and she got beaten up and she died, your heart and your mind would not be content and saying, this was God on earth and I was going to worship her. You would say she is not worthy of worship because this is not any de depiction of God, Almighty, creator of the heavens and the earth. So, to worship someone needs to be deserving of our worship, worthy of our worship. These things all around us, none of these things are worthy of worship. You are not worthy of worship. This tree is not worthy of worship. This sky, the moon, the stars are not worthy of worship. The one who is worthy of worship is the one who is self-sufficient, independent, almighty creator of the heavens and the earth. Jesus was he self-sufficient. He was not self-sufficient. He was dependent on his father, even for his own existence. In the Christian belief, is it not correct that he is begotten from the father, generated, proceeded from the father? So he's dependent on the father. Anyone who is dependent on someone cannot be God, because God is independent, self-sufficient. No, Jesus, if he's dependent on the Father, then he cannot be God. Because God, by definition, has to be independent. When you say form of God, he's a lesser God. Are you talking about? We're talking about that there can be only one concept of God who is worthy of worship. And that God is someone who is almighty, independent, self-sufficient. Anyone who says, oh, I cannot do anything of myself. I am so limited in what I know, what I do. Um, just wait a second, let me get, get permission. You would say that person is not worthy of worship. Look, the one who is worthy of worship is the one who is most perfect. And the only being who is most perfect is God Almighty and none else. No one else is perfect other than God. If we find imperfection in any agent who claims to be God or claimed by people to be God, like angels and Jesus or anything, and we see imperfection, we would say this cannot be God worthy of worship. Because God, you see, our heart and our mind can only surrender to the one who is the most high. The most high is the most perfect. Jesus is not the most high. He himself submits and surrenders to the Almighty God. He kneels down on the ground. He bows his head on the ground in the Garden of Gethsemane. And he weeps and cries to God. Anyone who does that is not God. God is the one who receives worship, not one who worships others. So God, imagine God the Father comes down and starts worshipping someone else. Would that make sense? Uh, well, I believe that Jesus and the Father are one. No, Father, imagine the Father comes down, prays to someone on the ground. Would you say this is God Almighty? Why would God pray to himself? Would it make any sense? No, no. What, what is prayer? Prayer is like a supplication, a plea. Oh, I need this, get this cup away from me. Or, you know, I'm suffering, you know, remove this suffering from me. It's a plea because of my inability to do it myself. Because I don't have the power or the ability or the might to be in control of my situation. I am in need of something that can re relieve me of the suffering or the problems that I have. When people pray, when people pray, oh God, you know, make me a better person because there are all these influences. Oh God, you know, save me from this danger. Because you are not able to save yourself from the danger, you're asking for help. So supplication and prayer is like asking for help. Why would God, the Father, ask for help from himself? I'm talking about the father. Imagine the father comes down and he prays to himself, oh, help me. It's not, I'm giving you a hypothetical scenario. Imagine the father comes down 
and he prays to himself, oh help me. Would that make sense? Um, that's different than... Uh, no, would it make sense though, I'm asking you? Would it make sense? The father within the Christian theology, if he came down as a man or as a woman and he starts praying to himself and says, help me, would you consider this to be God? So who is he asking for help? Yeah, the, the father, if he came down as a woman, who is asking for help? To himself. So does that make sense to ask himself to help? Does it even make sense? It doesn't make sense, does it? It doesn't make sense. I'm, you can think about it later. It doesn't make sense God to help, ask help from himself. No, no, no. God to ask him, oh, uh, can you help me on this? It simply doesn't make any sense. God is in control. He is the sovereign Lord. He is almighty, the sovereign. The king, when you say a sovereign king, his rule is law. When he says, off with your head, like the queen used to say in, back in the old days, that's it. The queen is not going to say, oh, oh, help me. I'm the queen, a sovereign queen. God is the Lord and God of all things. The sovereign of all sovereigns, yeah, Malikul Mulk. He is the king of kings. So he is not going to say, oh, help me and save me. It doesn't make any sense. So when we find in the Bible, I know, look, it, it might be difficult for you to, to accept these kind of challenging questions and, and critique of your religion. And you find it like very difficult to, to process them. It's because you may not have been privy to the information of Islam. Islam tells about Jesus Christ, who was a prophet and messenger of God, who came to tell people about God. A Muslim cannot be a Muslim unless they believe that Jesus was the Messiah, the prophet, the messenger of God. So we, we believe and we love Jesus Christ. In fact, we would say we love Jesus Christ more than any Christian. This is how we will go and we will defend his honor, defend his, his right to what it is and, and correct all the falsehood that has been attributed to him. So we believe God sent prophets and messengers to all nations before and he told them how to live their lives and so on. Moses came upon him be peace and he told the people to worship God, not to worship himself. So those people who worshipped God as Moses told them to in line with God's commands and regulations and guidance, they were the successful ones. But if you ask now what was their religion I would say their religion was this religion of submission to God Almighty. The one who submits and surrender to the religion, to the way, to the will of God. Do you know what that is in Arabic? Islam. Islam in Arabic, it's in English, it's a submission and surrender of one's will to the will of God. And one who does that is a Muslim. So if I submit myself, if you submit yourself, if Abraham the prophet, if Moses the prophet, peace be upon the prophets, if they submit and surrender their will, to the will of one true God, it makes them Muslims. Jesus, likewise, upon him be peace. The son of Mary, he submitted his will to the will of God. That makes him a Muslim. So Islam is not an alien religion, my sister in humanity. Islam is not a new religion. It is the same continuation of the religion of God, the message, the truth of God, but the finality of message, the finality of God, prophets and messengers. What you need to do is simply go and study the life of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, study the Quran and ask yourself, is this the final revelation from God? Because if it is, herein lies the success in this life and in the hereafter. God didn't simply ask us, did Jesus simply say, you know what, you keep on believing in the law of Noah, you keep on believing in the law of Abraham, and you keep on believing in the teaching of Moses and that's it, you have salvation. No. It was necessary, mandatory, obligatory, incumbent upon the people around Jesus to follow Jesus because he is the one who is now with the fresh revelation from God. So if now Prophet Muhammad وسلم, if Prophet Muhammad has brought the final revelation, it is necessary for all of us 
to follow the final revelation from God and not simply say, I'm going to stick to, I'm going to rely on and depend on and follow the laws of Moses, the Torah only, or the Gospels, or the New Testament, or the Bible. We have to follow what God has revealed in his final revelation. And the Quran is that final revelation from God. It addresses the Jews and the Christians. It says, al Kitab. It says, Oh people of the book, in an honorific way, in an honorary title, saying, Oh people of the book, don't commit transgression in your religion, don't commit this excess. Do not say Trinity or three for your God, your God, your Lord, God is one. And it tells you about do not say God is Jesus or Jesus is God. When Jesus himself said, Worship my God and your Lord, and that is a straight path. And you read the stories of Miriam when she was about, she was pregnant. What did she do to, to, the, to come to the people and, and save herself from defamation, from accusation? Miriam, meaning the Mary, mother of Christ. When she had the child, how did she defend her honor from accusations of adultery? How? The Quran gives us information. Does the Bible give you anything? Yeah, yeah. So how did the people know? Was was that Joseph's son, or it was her own son without any male intervention? Did she lie about it? Did she tell people this is not the son of Joseph, but this is a child that God has created within me, which is? The Bible doesn't. So how did she defend her from her accusation when she brought the child? Right, the Quran tells you about this real historical information. When she had that child, she was so scared in what to do. She went into seclusion, okay? So when the baby was delivered and she brought the child to the people and the people said, Oh, Maryam, the sister of Aaron, Ya Ukhta Harun, what have you done? Your parents, your father and mother wasn't unchaste, wasn't bad people. What have you brought? You have brought like, you know, total, um, you know, what's this called? Disrepute to us and so on and so forth. What have you done? Did she then say like, oh, of course I haven't done anything. God has gifted me a child. She didn't say anything. She says, She pointed to the child. It says, how can we speak to a child who's in the cradle? The child spoke from the cradle, the Quran says. He said, Inni Abdullah, I am a servant of Allah. God has made me a prophet and he has blessed me and he has not made me ungrateful um, to my mother and so on. So when the baby Jesus in the cradle spoke, it became obvious to the people that she is not someone who committed adultery. She is telling the truth that this is indeed a, a, a child, a creation of God that God has given as a prophet and a messenger to them because he says, Abdullah, I am a servant of God and God has made me a prophet. So the Quran gives you this information which the Bible doesn't give you anything of that historical information.